Hey squad, welcome back. Now today we're going to be exploring the brand new Logic Pro X Quick Sampler. And this of course became available in version 10.5. Okay, now to access the sampler, you do it in the usual way. You create a new software instrument. You hit create just there from here. And in the list, you'll find Quick Sampler. Now you would have seen as well, if we were to go back here, you'd see as well that we have the option of the sampler instrument, which we'll get to in another video. Okay, so what we're gonna do is kind of go through some of the key features in this quick sampler, which I find brilliant in that it's so easy to use and it makes so much sense. Now, before we start looking at the actual features, you need to be aware that it does actually come with preset sounds, okay? Preset samples or synths such as this one. So you have all these categories, arpeggiator, um, basses, chords, keys, pads, and so on. Now let's just pull up a bass. Let's see, how about this one, plucked bass. Okay, and that's really cool. Um, if you notice as well, just over here, it kind of shows you where that sample actually sits on the hard drive, which so you can actually get to it. So if we click here, you can actually show this sample in the finder and get straight to it. You can rename the file, remove the current file, clear the history. You can also load your own audio file directly into this sampler really simply like so. So click on that, you navigate across your computer on your hard drive, find your sample and then load it up. And then it's ready for editing and manipulating um, into your production. So that's really cool. Now let's just kind of look at these four options that you've got here. You've got classic mode, which we're currently in. Depending on how long I hold my finger on the keyboard note, that will determine how much of the sample is played. So let me try that now. So let's actually load up another sample that will demonstrate this properly. We've got the growl bass loaded up now. And if I press the keyboard and hold, that's what you get. However, if I just tap the keyboard, okay, and that's classic mode. However, if we went to one shot, now that will play the entire sample. So I'm just gonna tap the keyboard. Okay, just that was just a tap. I'm gonna hold it for a bit longer. I've released now and the sample. I only held it for a short while, then I released, but it played the entire sample all the way through. So that's your one shot. Now Slice is where it gets a lot more interesting. So if we go to Slice, now what we're looking at here is the sample divided up into segments. And these segments can be determined by a number of different things, but we're gonna to come to that a bit later on. Now, recorder is what I wanna start with, in fact. And this is brilliant because what this allows you to do is to record directly into the quick sampler where you can then instantly edit and manipulate the sample to suit your production needs. And we'll be doing that in just a minute. But let's just go back here and I'll give you a quick overview of what's happening down here. So you've got the two LFOs here, which you can use to manipulate the sound of your sample over time. You've got a modulation matrix here as well, but we're not gonna to touch on this right now, that's for later. You've got this section where you can adjust your pitch, course, find um, your glide and the envelope depth. Here you've got your filter as well, and you've got your amplifier over here, which allows you to adjust the pan position, um, the volume, as well as your polyphony right here. So you can choose from up to, up to 64 notes of polyphony or monophonic, okay? So that's um, this section, but we're not focusing on this too much today. We're gonna be more focused on getting straight in, doing some sampling and applying some of the tricks in Quick Sampler to our recording. Okay, so let's kick things off with the recorder okay, which is something I really love about this quick sampler. I'm just gonna record something real quick using my audio interface. So I'm just gonna come over here to the input. I'm gonna choose input one, where my mic is connected. Now you've got your recording threshold. So what this does in fact, is once you hit record here, the sampler will wait until your audio crosses this 
um, meter right here, this level meter right here, which is set to minus 23 dB. So if your audio is below minus 23 dB, it will not trigger the sampler to start recording. So let's just demonstrate that right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, as you would have heard, I was whispering one, two, three, four, five, six, and then from seven, eight, nine is when the recording was triggered. So if we were to play that back now, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so as you can tell, it only picked up from seven, of course, because that's where the audio level crossed the threshold. Let's do something else. Um, this time I'm going to do another recording. Let's go to recorder and I'm going to record something else to go with this production that I've got running in the background. I'm just going to hum a note into the sampler and let that record. And then, then I'll show you how we can manipulate that to fit into the production. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do excuse the croaky voice. Um, it's the only one I've got. But anyway, it's enough to kind of demonstrate what I want to show you right here. So we've got our recording. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch from classic and we're gonna go to slice. You'll notice all of these transient markers have come up. And what we wanna do is really capture only these notes that I've actually hummed in. We don't want the noise, clicks and the glitches. What we're gonna do is come down here to sensitivity and we're gonna pull down the sensitivity so the quick sampler only identifies where there's a strong enough signal. Okay, so we're gonna keep coming down until we've got about, let's see, about six notes. Let's see, right, that's probably a little too much. There, there we go. Yes, there we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes. We could also go in and adjust the start position of these transient markers. Like so. And now, as you can see right here, all of these different notes have been mapped to different notes on the keyboard automatically. So if I now play C1 on the keyboard, all right, it's not the best tone, but you know, you get the idea. As I go and up the keyboard, each tone is sounded. Okay, so the other thing we can do is we can decide whether or not we want the notes to go chromatically from one key to the next on the keyboard, or we can set them to all white notes or all black notes. So we'll do that just here. Let's, so at the moment it's set to chromatic. And if we were to set this to all white notes, you'll see this one here is now C1, D1, E1, and so on. And all of the black notes are now missing. And of course we can switch it the other way around. Now working our way along this um, section right here, um, we've got transients here. However, we can divide up the sample into equal beat divisions or just equal divisions, or we can do it manually. We're gonna leave it on transient plus note for now. And we come over here and I'm gonna hit the key E1, just tap the key, okay? And it's playing the whole sample all the way through. And we can change um, the settings so that there's a gate on. So we are now emulating classic mode by switching on the gate. Okay, so before we move on to um, taking our next action, something I want to point out to you that will save you a lot of aggravation when you're working with this. If, for example, you were to click here by accident and insert a new transient marker, you might instantly reach for your key command Z or command Z to undo, or you might go up here and hit edit undo. That is not the right course of action. If I was to do command Z right now, I would undo a previous action taken in the actual main project, not anything to do with here. So you've got to keep in mind that you need to use the undo button right here to undo mistakes, or if you wanna go back a step within this unit, okay? So keep that in mind because it will actually, it could actually save you a lot of headache. So I've done that by mistake. I'm just gonna hit undo right here and that's disappeared. 
Okay, now I've decided that this segment right here is what I want to keep. Mm -hmm. It's not perfect, but it will do. I want to crop everything outside of this note. And to do so, grab the start and end points and drag them in like so. Now, so this is the section I want to keep. I then come up here and I choose crop sample. And now this is what we're left with. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is change the polyphony on mono. So each time I hit the note on the keyboard, the previous note will cut out and the new note will start. Mm -hmm. Want to switch a gate on? Mm -hmm. Now I want to map this across the entire keyboard. So what I'm going to do is now come up to classic mode and now I'll press notes on the keyboard now a quick sample has put in a loop section just here if you notice the lower down the keyboard I go as a classic sample would do the slower the speed of the sample whereas a higher up the keyboard faster the sample plays now you can switch on this flex option where the sample speed will remain exactly the same irrespective of what note you press on the keyboard so So this is a really handy feature as well. So let me just record this idea down real quick and then we'll move on to some more of the great features in Quick Sampler. I just played the instrumental part so far. Okay, and let's bring my recording in. Now, there are a number of ways in which you can import samples directly into the quick sampler from anywhere on your computer. Now, if you were to drag and drop your sample or audio recording into this section just here, you would see some options pop up. So let's open up the media browser and I'm going to select some files from my tutorial samples folder. So I've got these two samples available to work with and I'm going to start with the drums. I'm just going to drag this drum sample over and hover here and you can see I've got a number of options right here. So I've got quick sampler, quick sampler original, quick sampler optimized, drum machine designer and I've got three alchemy options. For this um, exercise we're going to go for quick sampler optimized and I'm going to click on that and release. And now you see the sample has been pulled into Quick Sampler and all of the slices have been put in place, as you can see right here, based on transient information. And each one of these slices is set to a different note. So now I'm just going to adjust the sensitivity a little bit. So um, it's a little bit tighter and I'm avoiding some of the noise and just keeping the hard transient information as the triggers for each note. Okay, great. The other thing I want to do is I want to assign all of these notes to the white note. And as I said before, you've got the options of dividing these slices up by division, equal divisions or manually, but we're going for transient and note. And now here's a great little feature that I want to show you. If you hover over this section, you'll see this light blue color come up and you're going to right click or control click and go to create drum machine designer track. If we click on that and now the quick sampler will export all of this information through to the drum machine designer which will map all of these sample segments 
to different cells on the drum machine designer, which is a fantastic option. And here we have it, the drum machine designer, and here are all of the notes mapped according to their position in the quick sample. And as you'd probably notice as well, all of the notes are still assigned to white keys on the keyboard. So we're starting on C1 there, D1, E1, and so on. So let's get on and make a quick drum pattern with this lot, and then we can add a quick bass line and we're done. So if you want to drag an audio recording directly from your media browser, you simply drag and drop into the sampler and you have two options. And we're going to select optimized on this occasion because that gives us a lot more flexibility. So it's been pulled in and the quick sampler has analyzed this. And now we're going to go straight over to the slice option or slice mode. And all of these small chunks or notes have been assigned to keys or notes on the keyboard. Now we're going to adjust the sensitivity of the transient information. We're going to keep it on chromatic, enable the gate and switch to follow tempo. Okay, so now that the notes have been mapped across the keyboard, I'm happy with the positioning. Let me just put down a quick bass line to go with my drum pattern, just to kind of demonstrate how this is done as well. And that'll be a wrap. stuff i really do hope you found the video useful if you did drop me a line in the comment section like the video and subscribe to the channel this will really help me out now remember to support me at dospeech.com as well as on my social media channels and finally switch on that notification bell so just like the rest of the mttc squad you'll find out as soon as my next video drops until next time i'm dr deuce peace <laughs>